This is a short video about sequences of functions. So uh, what is a sequence of functions? So maybe before we put down like some formal definition of what it is, it'd be good to start with an example. So let's say for each natural number m, I'm gonna let fn be the following function, where um, usual notation, I'm thinking of this as the domain. So my domain in this case is our real numbers. In general, I might just call it a, where a is some subset of the real numbers. Anyway, my sequence of functions here or I guess maybe I gave away what we're gonna do. For each natural number, I've got a function that is x divided by n. So f1, for example, right, when n is one, this would be x over one, right? And so that's just the function f of x equals x. So the line with slope one. f2 would be the function x over two, where the line with slope a half to the origin. And uh, what else? f3 would be x over three. That would be a line with slope one third uh, that goes through the origin. So what I hope you see is that for each natural number, I've got a different function. And so, um, and so on. So for each natural number, I've got a different function. And here's a picture of them too. I graphed f1 for you, I graphed f2, I graphed f3. And what we want to do I'm gonna call this a sequence of functions, fn, and maybe something that you might notice is for each individual x value, so for each fixed x, uh, the sequence fn of x, that's a sequence of real numbers. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that, and I'll try to tie it into my picture. Let's take x equal to one. Then, in that case, what happens when you plug in one to all of these functions here, plug in one for x, that would be, uh, one, one half, one third. And where am I getting these numbers from? Well, this is f1 of one. Uh, one half would be f2 of one. One third would be f3 of one. So in other words, when you plug in one to x for all these functions here, what I'm saying is now you've got a sequence of numbers. So sequence of functions should spit out a sequence of numbers for each input to your function. And in a picture here, uh, I've got the same graph, and when x is one, all I'm doing is I'm looking at these dots here and just looking at the y values. And so these numbers again uh, form my sequence here. Now the question that we want to get across, or to get at here, um, is whether the sequence of functions converges to anything. And what that ought to be related to is, well, does this corresponding sequence of numbers converge. And so we'll try to make that a little bit more precise as we go. Maybe I got a little bit ahead of myself there. So it's possible that for some x values in your domain that the sequence of numbers, fn of x, converges. But for some other x values in your domain, it's possible that the sequence of numbers, fn of x, diverges. So let's focus on the numbers x for which fn of x does converge. Then the corresponding limit ought to depend on x as well. So in other words, the limit itself should be a function of whatever x is. And so it should be a function moreover, the limit should be a function uh, whose domain consists of all x for which fn of x converges. And this is kind of a, a hand wavy way to talk about again that a sequence of functions converges to some other function. We're gonna make it a little bit more precise in just a moment. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to say again is that that sequence of functions fn converges to this function f, right? So f would be this limit function. So what is kind of the precise definition? And then we will come back to this example to try to, again, kind of further illustrate what I'm trying to say about what's the behavior about the blue graph, the red graph, and the yellow graph, et cetera, as that increases. And you probably see it already, but we'll try to make it a little bit more formal as we go. So what's the definition of what it means for a sequence of functions to converge? So let's say you've got a sequence fn, it's a sequence of functions whose domain is a, and let's say that a sub zero is some subset of your domain a, and let's let f be a function from a zero to r. And we're gonna say that the sequence of functions fn converges on a zero to the function f, if for each value in a zero, the sequence of numbers fn of x converges to the number f of x in r. In that case, we would say that the function f is the limit of fn on a zero. And uh, we would also say that fn, the sequence of functions, converges pointwise on a zero to f. We're gonna have a stronger notion of what it means for functions to converge to another one a little bit later in another video called the uniform convergence. Right now we're talking about pointwise convergence though. So again, what happens for each x in a zero such that fn of x converges, uh, that should converge to f of x. And that is what it means again for the sequence of functions to converge to f pointwise on this domain, a zero. 
Let's do some examples. So let's look at Fn, and it's the one above, the lines, x over n. So what we want to show is that the limit of these functions is just zero. And when I say zero for all x and r, you're like, well, what do you mean? I'm thinking of this as the zero function. So it's the zero function f of x equals zero for all x and r. Another way some books might write it is this uh, equivalent notation here, and that reads that f is identically zero. It's zero for all values of x. It's just kind of a shorthand for this. Okay. So how would you actually show this? This is sort of a proof, I don't know. Proof sounds really formal for what we're about to do. But uh, what do we know? Well, I know that the limit as n goes to infinity, remember the convention, when I say lim here, uh, the convention in Bartle and Sherbert too is that that is automatically assuming that n is going to infinity. So the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n is zero. And thus for any real number x, so for any fixed real number x, the limit of fn of x, that should be the limit of x over n, right? Because, I mean, that's the formula here. And then in this case, if this limit is as n goes to infinity, it doesn't care about x. It's independent of x, so x should be able to come out front. So this should be x times the limit, which is x times 0, which, of course, is 0. So what just happened, we just showed that the limit of fn of x is 0 for any x in r. So what does that mean, then? That means that fn of x converges to 0 pointwise on the whole real line. So again, what am I saying to you? I'm, I'm trying to, in my picture, I want to notice the behavior now. I'm saying for any fixed x, let's say this fixed x value here, so I'm looking at all the corresponding points, I notice the trend that they're all going downward and they want to converge to zero. And what we just said is that that happened all the time. I see there's always this trend that the points are converging downward to zero, the points on the graph are. That's what's going on. So those functions want to get close to that horizontal line that's the constant function zero. Let's do a little bit more of an interesting example. We want to investigate the limit of x to the nth power. And so in this case, uh, I'm saying that uh, x to the n is this function, or this sequence of functions, g sub n of x. So I'll refer to it as g sub n pretty soon. All right, so the way that you should handle these types of problems is, well, to think about what does this formula do for different values of x? So again, what we want to determine too, not only like what should the limit function be, but what's the domain of the limit function going to be? In other words, what x values does this sequence converge? So when x is 1, that's gn of 1 then, which again, that's just my function x to the n. That would be 1 to the nth power. That's equal to 1, so it converges to 1 in particular. Okay, so what we've got then is that x equals 1 is going to be part of my domain of the limit function later on. And I know the value of the limit function is also going to be 1 when the input is 1. All right, so let's move along here. So, let's, uh, so what if we took x's that are between 0 and 1, including 0 and not including 1? Well, then gn of x would be x to the n. Thinking about raising a number like that to the nth power, and if I think about as n gets large, I take a larger and larger power of, say, a half, that number gets close to 0. So this goes to 0. So what have we got then? I've got that my sequence gn of x converges to 0 if x is any number between 0 and 1, including 0, not including 1. Uh, same logic here. What if x is between negative 1 and 0? Again, not including negative 1, but including 0. Same logic. When you take higher and higher powers of that, those are numbers like negative a half, say. If you keep taking higher and higher powers of that, it's going to go to 0. And so this goes to 0 as well. Now let's think about x equals negative 1. So what am I doing? Just to kind of backtrack here, I'm just kind of going through different types of x values and seeing what the behavior of this x to that power is. So if x is negative 1, then the value of the sequence of your functions is just always just minus 1 to the nth power. Those don't converge as n goes to infinity. So that diverges. I put that in red. That's not going to be part of my limit function later on. Therefore, x equals negative 1 is not going to be part of the domain of the limit function later on. Uh, and if x is bigger than 1 in absolute value, so these are numbers like 10 or like negative 1,000, well, if you think about taking a number like 10 or negative 1,000 to a higher and higher power, it's unbounded. And so in particular, that means it diverges as well. So if you think about it, these situations, they kind of cover all the possibilities for a real number. And so let's talk about what the limit function should be. What can we say that gn of x converges to? So g of x will be what the limit is, and it's going to be a piecewise function. So let's think about what does this part say right here? That says that if you're a real number that is from negative 1 until you get to 1, not including negative 1, not including 1, then gn of x wants to go to 0. 
And so the limit should be zero if negative one is less than x is less than one. And the other thing that I had up here is that if x is one, then the limit should be one, is what that line says. So one if x is one. And so thus this piecewise function is what this sequence of functions x to the n converges to. And so again, uh, gn converges to g. My sequence of functions x to the n converges to this piecewise function g. And you've always got to tell, too, on what domain. So for values of x that are between minus 1 and 1, including 1, not including negative 1.